At Granger, we're for the ones who specialize in saving the day and for the ones who've mastered the art of keeping business moving. We offer industrial grade supplies for every industry with same day pickup and next day delivery on most orders, all backed by real people ready to help. So you can get the right answers and products right when you need them. Call, clickgranger.com or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. With the Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Hey all, welcome back to the Real Life Pharmacology Podcast. I'm your host, Eric Christensen. Thank you so much for listening. As always, go check out reallifepharmacology.com. Get your free 31-page PDF on the top 200 drugs. Uh, great resource, absolutely no cost to you, simply for uh, subscribing via email uh, to our email list. We'll get you sent, uh, get that sent to you. So again, go check that out uh, at no cost to you. All right, the drug of the day today is isosorbide mononitrate. Brand name of this medication is Imder. And you'll most often see this medication used on a chronic basis for the prevention of angina symptoms. And indeed, that's exactly where I've seen it used in clinical practice. How does this work? Well, it's a nitrate. So naturally, it's going to form uh, nitric oxide. Nitric oxide activates guanylate cyclase, which increases cyclic GMP. Ultimately, an increase in cyclic GMP GMP causes smooth muscle relaxation. And uh, the long and the short of it is we're going to get some vasodilation from that. And IMDR, isosorbide mononitrate, is more specific uh, for the veins versus the arteries. It does have some action on the arteries as well, but it's going to have more action on the uh, veins. So ultimately what this is going to do for the heart uh, is reduce oxygen demand and reduce that preload because of that dilation of the veins. So dosing uh, there is two dosage formulations of isosorbide mononitrate. Uh, there is an immediate release formulation, which I can't say I've seen in quite some time. Uh, reason being is it it uh, requires twice daily dosing. And the other unique thing, which I'll talk about with the tolerance factor, is you kind of got to dose that a little bit earlier in the day. You're typically not going to do 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. probably with twice daily dosing. So having a patient taken at 3, 4, 5 p.m. Uh, is probably going to be a little bit difficult for some people with uh, their schedule. So again, not going to see uh, immediate release used very often at all. The extended release formulation is probably what you're going to see, and that is once daily dosing. Usual dosage range uh, that I've seen in practice is kind of 30 to maybe up to 120 milligrams uh, per day. Uh, 240 is the max. Uh, I can't say I've seen that dose in a long time, uh, but it it certainly uh, is there and is available that way. So again, uh, isosorbide mononitrate, using it for anti-angina prevention. So... This is a huge patient education point. Uh, if it's being used for prevention, it's not used to treat an acute angina attack. And just getting briefly into the kinetics of this medication, the onset of action is 30 plus minutes uh, for this medication to start working. So uh, naturally, it's not going to be effective acutely uh, if it's doesn't have a quick uh, onset of action. So this is not a replacement or a substitute for, uh, let's say, sublingual nitroglycerin or nitroglycerin spray that works acutely 
uh, to help relieve chest pain symptoms. This is more on the preventative side. So somebody that's having numerous angina attacks, and we're going to use uh, long-acting nitrate, like isosorbide mononitrate, uh, to help reduce the frequency uh, of those angina-type episodes. All right, let's get into adverse effects a little bit. So uh, first and foremost, headache. That is going to be the most prominent adverse effect uh, with nitrates in general. And if you think about it from a mechanism of action standpoint, that vasodilation uh, of the uh, arteries and vessels in the brain, uh, that can lead to symptoms of headache. So that's definitely a problem. Uh, something to pay attention to and obviously identify how well your patients tolerate that. Uh, other side effects, uh, flushing. So this is a redness of, of the face, neck area. Uh, that can obviously happen from that vasodilation when you've got a medication that does that. Uh, that is certainly a risk. Dizziness falls in line uh, with that drop in blood pressure potentially. Uh, sometimes you may see uh, some sedation or CNS depressant type effects uh, from this medication as well. Uh, rarely you may see some cardiac rhythm changes, some pace changes. Uh, so that's definitely something we're going to monitor as well just with uh, checking out that pulse. All right, let's get into the tolerance issue. This always comes up on uh, board exams and that type of thing. Uh, so so pay attention uh, to this for sure. So what is tolerance? So tolerance is basically the body adapting to having the medication around and the medication not being as effective. So nitrates uh, exhibit tolerance. So essentially what we need to do is have nitrate-free time periods and the IMDR product, dose once daily, the extended release, does give us that. Uh, this medication's got a half-life in the range of uh, five to six hours. So as you can imagine, after a couple of half-lives, two or three half-lives, that medication is pretty close to gone um, out of the body, or at least at very low concentrations. But if we were to take, uh, let's say, the extended release product twice a day, um, you're going to likely run into the issue where the effectiveness is going to decline because uh, we, we're not having that nitrate-free period. So again, that's why the medications are kind of set up the way they are, uh, where the uh, extended release product does have some extension over most of the day, but it does allow, as concentrations drop, uh, for that little bit of uh, nitrate-free time period. And then if you're taking the immediate release, uh, that's why the, the dosing is a little bit more specific um, around the time frame that we give it and that you're probably going to see that at 8 a.m., you know, and maybe in that 3 to 5 p.m. range. And that probably gives us a little bit of time at night uh, when we're getting a, a solid uh, kind of nitrate-free or nitrate-low concentration period uh, to prevent that tolerance issue. Uh, other kinetic parameters to think about, uh, probably the, the biggest one is, is onset of action. Again, that, that plays into that um, patient education role where this is not a medication for acute relief of angina symptoms. So really, really important uh, piece to educate your patients on there. All right, let's take a quick break from our sponsor and we'll wrap up with drug interactions. If you're in the market for any pharmacist board certification study materials, uh, check out the link in the show notes. Uh, we've got BCMTMS, BCPS, NAPLEX, Ambulatory Care, Geriatrics, uh, and many, many other resources as well if you're not a pharmacist. So uh, go check that out. Support the sponsor. Uh, you can find all those links uh, in the show notes or at meded101.com slash store, S-T-O-R-E. All right, wrapping up with drug interactions. So first and foremost, we've got the uh, PDE5 inhibitors used for uh, sexual dysfunction, brand names like Viagra, Cialis. So generic names, Sildenafil, uh, Vardenafil, Tadalafil. These medications shouldn't be taken with nitrates. 
uh, specifically for sildenafil and vardenafil, uh, 24 hours apart is, is what it needs to be. Tadalafil actually has a longer half-life and needs a longer separation. You shouldn't take these medications uh, within 48 hours of each other. And I actually did a post on this. So if you Google search um, MedEd 101 recommended separation for nitrates and PDE5 inhibitors, I uh, did a nice blog post uh, on kind of explaining this and, and what's recommended and what's not. So if you just want to give that a Google search, um, you can certainly access that if you want some more reading on that. Uh, alcohol. Uh, I think it is important in general to, at a minimum, have patients be cautious with alcohol. Uh, ideally, it would be best to avoid alcohol. Uh, drop in blood pressure is what can potentially happen. Um, I've also seen an exacerbation of flushing. Alcohol tends to do that in, in general um, for some people more than others where they get the redness in the face and that type of thing. And having um, adding alcohol on top of a nitrate type product, uh, you're potentially going to worsen uh, that drop in blood pressure, maybe create some dizziness, and then that flushing may be exacerbated by that as well. Uh, of course, we've got to think about other blood pressure medications that the patient is taking. Um, when we add on isosorbide mononitrate, let's say we're managing angina, adding it onto a beta blocker or a calcium channel blocker, for example, that blood pressure can certainly drop further. So really got to pay attention to dizziness, monitoring blood pressure uh, with patients taking uh, both these uh, type of medications. And then the flushing reaction, um, there is some potential of uh, niacin, another medication that is kind of notorious for causing flushing. So that's kind of an additive uh, type drug interaction. And then with uh, SIP enzymes, things like that, we really don't have to worry about that with uh, isosorbide mononitrates. So that is definitely uh, a good thing for sure. So with that, I'm going to wrap up the podcast for today. Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed the show, leave us a rating review on iTunes or wherever you're listening. Uh, greatly appreciate that. It helps us get the word out, the message out uh, about this podcast and obviously helps me educate more people about pharmacology. Be sure you check out the Flippin' Pharmacology flashcards, a great resource for anyone going through pharmacology classes, whether you're a nurse, pharmacist, med student. I've pulled out a lot of clinical practice pearls and put a lot of that information within those flashcards as well as a lot of the information uh, you hear on the, the podcast in a nice, well-organized fashion. So again, you can find those on Amazon if you're in the U.S., uh, Flippin' Pharmacology flashcards. With that, I am going to sign off for today. If you want to reach out to me, mededucation101 at gmail.com, or you can track me down at LinkedIn. And I thank you so much for listening, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. At Granger, we're for the ones who specialize in saving the day and for the ones who've mastered the art of keeping business moving. We offer industrial-grade supplies for every industry with same-day pickup and next-day delivery on most orders all backed by real people ready to help. So you can get the right answers and products right when you need them. Call, click or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done.